at Just the Underground Video Network, and we're here with Adam and Matt. And they're right, so they're going to tell us a little bit about Mask and Tape. I hope, because I'm like, <laughs> if I am, then uh, I will tell you. <laughs> well, what do you so, want to do? You want to know the origins of Mask and Cape? Uh, how, how did you come across? How did you come about the idea? Um, well, the idea, Matt and I actually used to, I used to manage Babbage's, formerly retail board. Uh, GameStop, TV. formerly Babbage's. Okay. And uh, I hired Matt as my assistant manager. One of the things that we hit upon when I hired him was that he liked comic books. Mm -hmm. And I like comic I actually worked at a comic store. That's actually the whole reason I got the job because I was grossly unqualified to be the assistant manager of the store. So I think it was all comics. So that's that yeah. And then yeah, we just started talking about it. And then you know, what as we, we worked do, together, yeah, what we would do with current characters, things like that, and it kind of morphed into what it is now. Yeah, it just you know came up with a bunch of ideas for characters which we just brainstormed for years and years. This is back in. Six or so? It's a while. It's a while, but not that. And, uh, no. You know, we killed with a. We actually made up an ash can of a, of a story that we took to Sandy in 2003 or something like that. And uh, <laughs> that got some harsh artistic criticism by Mr. Larson. Eric wow. Woods, who is uh, he's known for his reviews. I got another one this year and it wasn't as was bad, so, uh, you know, it it's, faces it's, all, it's all it's all in the movie, you know, right direction. But yeah, that year was, that year was the, uh, the bad review, yeah. the, the harsh review, let's say. I guess for them, a bad review is a good review. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, from what I understand, I never, I've never experienced it. Yeah. Apparently, he really was. But, you know, it's all, you know, any, any review you take into heart. Yeah, I mean, he, he, you know, well, we basically kind of like stopped. We were done. We stopped for like a year, year and a half or so. Yeah. Just because you know, he was a spot, I was kind of spotted, and then we just kind of like said, we got like, let's do it, do it right, you know, because like it's, you know, it's our dream. Yeah, you know? exactly. I, I think he probably was happier that you decided to say balls to the wall and like, no, we ain't stopping. Yeah. 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 I think but, that's uh, what you have to do. You know, you can't like. You can't let that kind of stuff get inside your head too much. Because you will get better. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. Like, you know, as good as you are today, it may not be how you are. But you should always be able to improve it. So, right. Right. you know, we just kind of took it hard, took the criticisms, and went back to the drawing board. Not necessarily sell these ideas. And we just got really got yeah. serious about it three years ago. We were like, you know, let's, let's get the LLC. Let's figure the company. Let's figure out how you do free. Let's figure out, you know, what you got to do. You know, get it done. Get it in. Get it color. Get it letter. Everything we did, all our research, and we just you know slowly worked at it, gave ourselves a top break on a reasonable timetable right, right. in order to figure out how to do this stuff and set goals. And you know, like a year ago, we were like a year ago last July, we we're like we're gonna premiere in San Diego with our book, and we had two. <laughs> so and uh, so basically, I mean, I, I don't know, asking Cape Comics is. Right you know, now, we started off with Colin and Eddie, which is you know, about uh, Colin, a nine-year-old boy, who uh, gets Eddie to prepare for his birthday, uh -huh. and he slowly discovers that Eddie's sort of his guide on this quest to uh, find and hunt monsters, and he has the ability to use toys as weapons, and uh, we sort of started, we had these other projects in mind from uh, when we had previously started working on this. And some of those characters were Master Cape and American Knight. And we found some writers to kind of hand those projects off to and start working on that and start really building it up in the universe. After, you know, we get our first origin arcs out of the way, about a year or so of storytelling, I think we'll uh, bring up the book and we'll start bringing everything together as a career in the universe. So it doesn't feel as much like a separate issue. But... It might feel like a random odd thing to throw in there, but do you remember the Nintendo game uh, Monster Party? Here with the Matt killing things. Oh, are you? Uh, yeah, it was the way uh, Nintendo. Uh, this interview's nice. over. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's what That's I was yeah. thinking. I have to, we'll have to have some images pop up of, of that. Okay. We have to look I it up. It was, it was weird. Monster. It was very strange. I remember the name. Yeah, a kid was with a bat. He woke up in a dream or something like that. The whole bat thing kind of reminded me of the whole monster thing. I'm like, you know, I'm 
I didn't know. I just going subconsciously. Maybe. Maybe. Now I'm gonna check it out. That and random <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. That's what I was thinking. I didn't know if he was going to go there with it. I was just like, I was like, yeah, he played the game. I was like, yeah. Um, but now you can play it and make the story for one year and Gore. Well, you try and say one and Gore will keep the best you can. Okay. Yeah, I tell that he's going to go for it. Yeah, okay. I'll keep it for everybody. I mean, it'll have more adult tones and darker storylines as we go on. It is about a kid who's hunting monsters. And we try to present it in a somewhat realistic fashion and approach his family and how it affects them and things like that. So obviously as the book goes on, it's going to be darker, but I never want to get it out of the hands of kids. Like I want it to be, I want the storytelling to be an adult enough for a grown audience, yet for to keep, always keep that like, kind of kid, kid-like quality and child-like quality. Now you're saying that's kind of hard with the mainstream. It is. Well, you know, that's, you that's, that's the moment. When I was, yeah, Muppets did it right. It you, works. You, you stick with, you know, blowing the stuff over the kids' heads for the adults, and you know, you kind of try and keep some of that in there for the kids. I think like it can be, I think it can be handled. Now, uh, granted, there are some characters that you can. Right, right. You know, the Ghost Rider's never going to be cuddly. And, you know, I just remember when I was a kid, all the stuff that I loved was actually like didn't treat me like a kid. Like, yeah, you know, you know, more like like I grew up like watching Robotech. You know? The real Ghostbusters is actually written by Schwarzenegger. Oh, really? And, uh, you know, just things with a little bit more depth, a little bit more creative, like, edge to them. Because they weren't like, you know, I grew up watching G.I. Joe, too. Even then, more personality stuff and stuff. Like Late 80s, early 90s. So. Yeah. But uh, go ahead, that's uh, the website. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, www.maskandcape.com. It's no brainer. <laughs> MySpace slash maskandcape.com. Yeah. Facebook, Mask and Cape. Deal. Comic space, we're on all. So check us out. It's all remotely interesting. There we are. All right. <laughs> there you go. Check them out.